<laughs> now, what about what about um, Anna? Well, come and take the microphone, and maybe come up here actually, because I, I put these two in the program together because they're, they're, I, I knew they would give a jolly good presentation, a, a double act. Um, I know the diagnosis is important, but I think despite the diagnosis, we still need to treat patient. Uh, that's what I wanted to put in my speech, but Dr. Christopher said, don't say it, because diagnosis is essential. Um, and um, I wanted to ask you, Patrick, you mentioned that in the Congress, there was some new section about vascular uh, in, uh, occlusion, mm -hmm. uh, I think in Monaco, you mm -hmm. attended, and we were discussing something new about vascular occlusion. So what was that? Okay, so I uh, was chairman of two sessions there. The one that you're relating to is probably dermatofilar blindness. So we have um, now advocated the use of Stokes. Um, I suppose most vascular occlusion of blindness has 34% stroke involved also with the brain that isn't really noted. So because we don't have dedicated interventional radiologists, ophthalmic surgeons, we're thinking now of referring the people into stroke centres where they do have the technology on board already. So what we were doing is a friend of ours, Ha Hong Nguyen from Ho Chi Minh City, of course, is using the interarterial uh, inter thrombotic approach, going in through the femoral artery, making its way all up the way through the internal carotid to the ophthalmic artery, just to the point, the center of retinal artery, and using hyaluronidase there. So he wrote a paper first of 10 cases that he reversed eight of them, and that was back in 2022, 23. So we brought him to Paris. And one of the problems that we noticed from these patients that um, their eyeball tends to shrink. So as a consequence, they never really get full restoration of visual acuity. They often need lenses afterwards to then, but we've had six cases reversed with superorbital technique. And Gene Carruthers very graciously um, gave me recognition on stage because, you know, for the last 10, 12 years, I've been saying retrovulvar is a total waste of time. There's no evidence that it works. You're wasting uh, patients, you know, sort of things through a procedure that can't work anatomically because the whole retrovascular bungle is on the three layers of dura matter. So even if you go in there, it can't reach it anyway. So we got a lot of our Asian friends saying, please don't use this. They went through the literature. And Jean turned around and she wrote a paper quite um, just before IMCAS saying use the superorbital or peribulbar or supertrocular technique. So we had a first case of reversal. Now, that's a very, very important one. And that will be the subject of another talk. Perhaps one of you might like to give a talk on the supratrocular injection technique. Um, uh, hands up here who feels that they would be able to do a supraocular a supratrochlear. Uh, Very simple. You... Hands up who thinks they would be able to. Hands up who thinks they'd like to have a little lesson on it. Okay, so we will do this talk. Can I just say one thing? Obviously, you can palpate the superorbital framing very easily. So the same thing. No, not now. Not no, now. No, 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 but no, no, just no. Okay, we're going to call this one to an end now. No, no, Patrick. Just one little thing. Yeah. Because people who can't palpate yeah. it, because yeah. sometimes it's closed. Yeah. I do it every day with laser sur surgery. But if you don't know where it is, 100% media border of the iris, obviously. Oh, gosh, that's a good tip. And maybe.